You are listening to Ask the Answers podcast. Join me, Adele Gabane, as I uncover the knowledge, inspiration, and empowerment the psychic world has to offer. Let's begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask the Answers podcast. I'm Adele Cobain, and our guest on today is the lovely Rachel Roberts, creator of Wolf Woman Rising, empowerment coach and author. How are you? Oh, great. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Oh, it's lovely to have you on board. I've been reading so much about you and intrigued to know more about what you get up to, because there's so much that we can get, get through in this podcast, and hopefully telling people so much about um, empowering them and how to use maybe something that they haven't used before within themselves and you know Mm -hmm. finding out a little bit more about how to um how to go about that but I I don't want to obviously burst the bubble because we're going to go back to basics and (laughs) find out you know where it's all come from with yourself so Rachel tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Great, yeah, thank you. So um, I'm an author, also a priestess as well, um, women's empowerment coach, a flower essence consultant and a sacred dance teacher. So I have lots of um, strings to my bow um, and I am the creatrix of Wolfman Rising, which is my wisdom school. So in that I bring forth all of those things, the dancing, what I call natural alchemy. So working with the earth, working with wolf wisdom, ancient mythology and history, or for the empowerment of my students so they can access what I call the three pillars of my business, which is courage, trust, and authenticity. Lovely. And also wealth, which is important. (laughs) (laughs) I'm up in North Wales in the mountains. Oh, lovely. I grew up in Wales. (laughs) Oh, the best place. (laughs) Absolutely. That's still all right. (laughs) So what got you into all of this? Where does it come from? I mean, I've always loved history and I've always loved dance and nature. So I think they've always been interests, you know, since I was a young child, I was one of those, you know, children that, you know, was out in the garden, you know, making kind of mud pies and flower potions and talking to my imaginary friends that, you know, everybody thought were imaginary. And now I know that they are just other beings of other kinds, you know, that were there and present and um, with me. And then I think I've just pursued those interests and, um, it became very apparent for me in my teenage years that I wanted to not just have those as interests or as hobbies, you know, those things that I found intriguing about the world, but I wanted to really share them in a way that was empowering and inspiring for other people. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, I felt like it really began with dance. That was my kind of my initiation into teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, And then gradually I brought forward kind of the history into that because that's also a huge part of me as well. And what sort of people do approach you? So it's been interesting because I've always, um, from like when I was, I started teaching very young when I was 16. Um, And at that point I was attracting, you know, women coming into my classes that were in their 50s, 60s, you know, that were kind of wanting this um, kind of reclaiming their body and their identity. And we kind of got to that point, you know, where the children had left and they were trying to find their identity again. And I found that ever since that it's women that are coming to, find themselves you know they perhaps gone off on paths you know various routes in life and when they start with thinking about or remembering you know who they are and what mm. they want this is when they seem to turn up in my sphere you know in my energy they seem to come to me when they're on a threshold and it's yeah. actually interesting because that really fits in with the wolf wisdom and all of the uh the things that wolf teaches us yeah what is the wolf wisdom what what's behind that <laughs> yeah so um I mean, Wolf for me has always been um, an ally and um, I've gone through lots of dark things in my life, um, like an abusive father and sexual assault. And um, I really kind of resonated with with the idea and the archetype of the wolf, Mm -hmm. kind of this strong feminine that although it roams the darkness, you know, it kind of... um, it's fierce, it's tenacious, you know, it has the strength, you know, to kind of keep on going. And um, 
I first really kind of brought uh, wolf wisdom into my teachings when I met the goddess Lupa and um, her st story is really important in that she is um, based at the, around the foundation of the city of Rome. Um, so way back 3000 years ago, and she was facilitating um, in mythology this these two princes that eventually became the kings of Rome, but they were babies when people tried to murder them. She rescued them, took them into her cave, mm -hmm. and then they had time with her and they came out ready to be kings. And I really resonate with that story of going into the darkness with the wolf, being nurtured there in the darkness with the mother wolf, you know, kind of um, being naked and, you know, stripped of everything, you know, feeling vulnerable and then finding strength in the darkness and then returning back out and walking back out into your destiny with those stories and with that experience but you know as empowerment not as wounds anymore yeah um, so wolf resonates with all of that I feel and I mean it's, it's lovely what you're saying there about when people are feeling lost in life or gone through traumatic times it's quite easy for people to not have to face it and to brush it under the carpet but obviously it can then it impacts you in your life in many mm -hmm. other ways, which might not be a, a very positive way. So if getting people to, I don't know if it accepts the right words, but to address it and to come forward and, you know, be be, be involved with some of the things that you do, um, mm -hmm. takes a lot of courage, a lot of guts for a lot of people to share maybe what they've been through. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's yeah. what the wolf embodies and can, and can, you know, actualizing you is is courage. Like I said, that strength, that tenacity, that ferocity, mm -hmm. because we do need that. You know, when a wound is dirty, we have to clean it out, you know, and it can sometimes be painful to clean it out, but it will fester if it is mm -hmm. left, you know, and that wound can become, a, you know, an empowerment. It can become something that actually is, you know, our threshold, our pivot to something even better, more powerful. Mm. And getting your, your voice out there, obviously very important for people to know the sort of things that you can help them with, because I know there's some people in my life that I know they've gone through traumatic times and they haven't dealt with it. And it does impact their relationships. And, you know, sometimes when, you know, you've met meet up with them and, you know, when maybe you've had a couple of drinks, you've been socialising, they feel a bit more relaxed to come forward and tell you some of the things that they've been through, but mm -hmm. maybe haven't told their actual loved ones. They're like, well, I've been through this, yeah. but they don't know that. Um, and and letting people know it's okay but I suppose lots of people are quite proud they don't want to especially with a guy they don't want to maybe show or say what they've been through and for their partners to worry about them yeah I think I think some of it is is fear of judgment you know we kind of mm. again going back you know to like the wolf pack I suppose we feel like um we always feel vulnerable like you know if we show weakness or we show our true selves and we, we will be pushed out of the pack you know and left yeah. into the wilderness and that's a that's a very intrinsic thing that goes way back in our biology our dna you know and so it is a, it's a big and it's a valid fear you know um i think we need to have that allowance for that mm -hmm. <clears throat> full allowance for all the things that terrifies and scare us you know they're they're okay that's okay to be scared to be terrified to feel inadequate but you don't have to keep on choosing that you know you can um you can move into something different you know we just have to make a choice I think a lot of it is about taking self-responsibility mm -hmm. a lot of the time we're waiting for someone else's permission mm -hmm. um we're waiting for someone else to do it for us or you know to shove us in that direction but you know healing Jen you have to be responsible for yourself no one else can do it and it you know we only have this one lifetime in this body and this identity to do this. And why would you wait? Like, why would you keep on reciprocate, you know, kind of keep, keep, you know, sending that wheel, just going forward at some point, you have to stop it. And mm -hmm. how long will you wait? How long will you keep on doing that? Um, but I was talking to someone the other day about like how often, you know, these situations, these scenarios are like putting ourselves you know, in a cardboard box you know, and eventually we'll get so used to that cardboard box that we won't want to step out and go into the freedom of the outdoors. It mm -hmm. actually gets easier and comfier to stay in the cardboard box. But, you know, if, you know one of my life examples, um, you know, with sexual assault is that I, I could still be absolutely terrified of men. Mm -hmm. However, if I hadn't chosen to go there, I wouldn't have met, you know, all the amazing men that are in my life right now that have contributed so significantly. Yeah. And I had to heal that because that one person that attacked me is not men in general. And that mm -hmm. goes the same for any wounds, although 
you know, that wound is valid and it did happen and we need to look at it with love and affection. You know, there is a point where you have to move on and you have to open up to the possibility and the potential of after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, what sort of things do you do when um, people do come to your courses or workshops? You know, if people are thinking and listening to this thinking, yeah, I can relate to this and I have been through a lot of hurt. I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know how to approach it. I don't know what your courses could maybe benefit me in, in some way. So what would you say to that? Mm -hmm. So I use kind of three different methods. Um, the first one is ancient mythology. So these are stories in the past, especially the stories of the goddess. Um, and I think learning them and relating to them um, can be a powerful tool of healing because, you know, in ancient times, people were telling stories around the fire. They didn't have TV or sadly, they didn't have podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, they were talking to each other. You know, they had this community where they were telling stories and these stories were important because um, they were relatable. They were kind of a personification you know, of real stories so people would listen to this like say Inanna's descent into the underworld or Lupus descent into the cave you would hear that story and go wow I really relate to that it it sounds like me I can see myself in that story mm -hmm. and then by seeing how they say return out of the cave or how they heal or how they get empowered it gives you a moment to think wow it's possible for me to do that too and it gives you mm -hmm. an example and inspiration so this is why I share ancient mythology and history. So you can see all the many pathways, all the many women that have been before that have done it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know your, your your pathway is unique, but there are always people that have done something similar before that can show you how it's done, how it's what's possible. And then flower essences, um, nature alchemy is what I use. So flower essences. The essence is the soul of a plant. So you know, like in herbal medicine, you use the chemicals where flower essence is use the soul of a plant. And I believe that each flower has a different remedy that can support you. And there'll be a remedy that matches the vibration of whatever it is you're going through. So, for example, there's borage flower essence. That is the flower essence healing of courage. So if you're feeling that you need courage or you need to access in yourself, you would take the flower essence as a remedy, you know, take a few drops. I would help you access and open up that part of you inside. And I think they're amazing. They're powerful because really you don't have to do anything apart from meet them and be open to receiving. Mm -hmm. And then my third pathway is dance. So dancing for me has always been kind of um, my go to for when I need to switch off my thinking head, you know, switch off my brain and all the thoughts that aren't helpful come into my body and listen to the wisdom of my body. What is my body trying to tell me? What, how is it trying to support me? Sometimes you can use it to access the places, you know, we often um, store, you know, wounds or trauma somewhere in our body. Um, and but also you can use your body just to remind yourself who you are, the gift of you, um, you know, like the, just the joy of being in your body. It can it can offer you that as well. Just mm. to, you know, if you ever had that moment where you've just put on your favorite music in the kitchen and you just had a really good boogie and afterwards you just feel so good because no yeah. one was looking. You weren't bothered about anybody looking. You know, you were probably twerking with the, you know, the spoons while you were cooking. And, you know, you just mm -hmm. had that joy and, and dance can do that. Yeah. Um, so those three is what I offer. And, you know, I think everybody is unique. Mm -hmm. And we all have our different ways. You know, one way doesn't fit everybody. So I, I do think you need to really kind of um, really get in touch with yourself, listen to yourself and see what resonates and what aligns. And you can use a different thing for different kind of healings or empowerments. You may want to go to one thing one time, one another. You know, we're not obliged to anything either. That's important. You know, yeah. we change and we'll always need something different for each situation. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of people that think, oh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel comfortable dancing in front of people. I'm not a dancer. Um, but I'm sure there's been times when you've probably seen somebody almost be like that, but over maybe a period of time have been able to then suddenly let themselves go and feel comfortable dancing in front of other people. Yeah, and I think in my in my dance classes, you know, often people will come the first few times, you know, like that, feeling a little bit like, you know, nervous and apprehensive. And sometimes even things like shame come up around their body and that's completely normal and natural. Um, but I think when you're supported by other women that are also there in the same situation, um, then that can lead you into a, a place where you feel safe. And this is, you know, 
one of the wounds I think we we have as a you know general populace is that we don't have community in the same way anymore and that we don't have we're not used to women being around us or men being around us and has all been there for mutual support and you know non-judgment and unconditional love so coming into a class um uh, with me you know I'm 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 encouraging a space that is full of non-judgment that you can mm -hmm. just do and be whoever you are and you know and everybody's dance looks different of course because our bodies look different you know and mm -hmm. it's it, dance is a unique expression I always kind of feel like um what's coming through you is 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 what you're meant to share so it's not meant to look a certain way you're not going to look like anybody else at all but mm -hmm. again life's so short I mean why not enjoy dancing and you, you don't want to get to your deathbed and be like oh well I just didn't dance because I was worried that that person might think I was stupid I mean like yeah. were you, are you really going to care is that really important yeah why are you choosing that that's important what if you chose yourself as important instead and again taking mm -hmm. responsibility for that choice absolutely and nice to have that support by yourself and other people and to help people yeah. with their confidence because we do get judged in, in so many ways in life, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's with your relationship, even your children could be, you know, horrible and put you down at times. And, you know, it, it, today's world, especially with social media, can be great in so many ways, but it can also really sort of name and shame people for them to then feel very uncomfortable about, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have looked that way, I shouldn't have worn that, or, you know, and yeah, it can be quite hard for people um, more so probably now. So to be able to help people actually know that's let's look at what is actually really important right now yeah yeah and just staying in your own lane definitely mm -hmm. and just not looking at other people's lanes but I think also it's really important to remember that we're all just human and we're all just trying to work this out like nobody has like a guidebook as to how to be human yeah. you know no one knows how to do it you know we're all just trying our best and you know <clears throat> sometimes by you know thinking oh that other person's judging me that in itself is a judgment mm -hmm. you know and and that person's judging you from their own wounds as well so you just have to just let them get on with it it's not your business if they're judging you at all mm -hmm. not your problem like you can't deal with that you're not responsible for it you're only responsible for yourself mm -hmm. um and that person's just trying to be a human just like you are that doesn't excuse other people and they're horrible and they're nasty but you know it sometimes you just have to remember we're all just trying our best trying to be human you know and um I said don't take responsibility for it just be responsible for yourself that's all you can do absolutely you've mentioned some of the techniques that you use in your courses and um what about things like manifestation and other things like that how effective are they well um I mean I um, I mean, my approach is kind of like if you want something if you need something you have to choose it but you have to take action you know because of that choice and I feel very much that love you know has to be in action love in action we have to do something like I don't resonate we're kind of like <laughs> I don't know say I wanted 10 million pounds so if I sat here and started meditating and going I want 10 million pounds I want 10 million pounds well that's great but what am I doing about it mm -hmm. I need to actually go and do something I need to add an action you know to that alignment or that getting into that mind space or kind of um you know you need to you need to kind of <laughs> put some fire in there as well it's not all just airy fairy in our head and I, I think sometimes that we can get so much into the we're told don't we that we have to change our mindset or you know oh it's just easy I just need to think about it and just you know do some affirmations in the mirror okay well <laughs> you know it's like say another <laughs> affirmation like oh you need to affirm that you love yourself so go and put a poster on the mirror that says I love you and say it 10 times and then you go downstairs and go and eat a chocolate bar yeah. does that action really align with what you were saying you know yeah. you you have to kind of like do something about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you know the wolf wisdom again you know that the wolf could stay in the den and it could stay there forever but it needs to go out and hunt food at some point yeah you know so you have to I really think that you have to put things into action you have to do something as well and the mindfulness and the manifestation I think can help you to align with action so that you know which action to take mm -hmm. but in the end you do have to actually do something <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> and some people, some people might find that hard, you know, taking those first steps of taking action because they don't know where to turn, they don't know who to talk to, they don't know um, what, what what the um, outcome is going to be. And that's what, again, is nice by speaking to somebody like yourself is that you can say, well, yeah. have you tried this and see things from a different perspective? And have you tried doing that? Never maybe telling people what to do or making the decisions for them, but just highlighting, mm. you know, sort of routes and directions and have you tried this yeah. and have you thought of that? Yeah, and it, it's just... As long as you do something, you know, and, yeah. and you can do something, it doesn't work. Or you go to a certain teacher and that they don't resonate or you try a certain way of healing. And it doesn't work for that thing. You know, it doesn't that doesn't mean that that thing's wrong. It just means that it doesn't doesn't work at that time. You just pivot. You try something else. Like I right. say to my students, you know, if they don't get a move straight away, you have to practice and practice makes progress. So you just keep trying, you know, even if it means, you know, I don't know if let's think of an example, perhaps. Let's think of something that we could talk about. I don't know. Example, say you wanted to get, you know, you were not enjoying your job and, you know, you were really kind of feeling it was horrible and you were daydreaming about a new job. You wanted to manifest a new job. Mm-hmm. Daydreaming is okay, but, you know, a small step could even be just kind of um, going away and brainstorming, you know, and writing down a few words, you know, what's the feeling that you want to have from something? Maybe it's a mm-hmm. feeling that you're missing. So I want to do something that's joyful. I want to do something that when I'm working in nature, that's mm-hmm. just one step. And that could be the, you could just do that step and then f- spend a few more months, you know, just aligning with that, you know, yeah. don't put pressure on yourself that there has to be a timeline that has to be done now. It has to be done in this way. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of always, the alarm bell for me is the word should, mm-hmm. like whenever should comes up, that is telling you that you shouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, you know, if it should comes up, then you need to step back and think, okay, take off the pressure completely mm-hmm. and just it's okay you know it's okay it doesn't have to be a certain way and then you can take other steps it doesn't mean I have to leave my job and you know apply for jobs straight away you can take mm-hmm. your time and do what's easeful for you you know what what resonates what feels good you know follow your pleasure in that yeah absolutely and as you mentioned everyone is different so there are going to be lots of people that are go-getters that want to achieve so much of their life there might be other people yeah. that are just happy being in the now and just being present and just enjoying like nature or doing something totally different to maybe somebody else who's more ambitious in in the workplace yeah definitely and that's the wisdom of walls you know that that the walls share that in the pack you know everybody kind of has a role and that role isn't like you have to do this and you have to do that it's what resonates with them so there'll be some that you like the big kind of bulky walls so you often find them at the front you know the pack because they're going through the snow to clear it out the way you'll find you know some walls will go off hunting you know while the mama wolf is kind of like you know with her babies you know in the den and she can't go off hunting when she's you know breastfeeding so they all have their different roles but they all contribute Mm -hmm. and everybody's welcome in the wolf pack you know they all like like the human body you know our hands aren't trying to be you know our teeth <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. we all you know we're sometimes we're the hands you in that we're the doers we're the engineers sometimes we're the teachers like we are the mouth sometimes we're the heart so we're the caregivers but every single part of the body is needed you know and it all offers its own unique difference mm. and the difference is actually is what we have to give that's our most valuable asset is our difference you know we're not all matchsticks we're yeah. offering something different and it all is pieces of the jigsaw that all come together and if we aren't our difference we can't truly offer we can't truly contribute and we aren't going to feel, feel fulfilled either that's the only mm. way to make a difference and feel fulfilled is to be our own unique you know self yeah. and we will we will change over the years as, as we grow as people you know how we were you know mm-hmm. in our teens is not necessarily going to be how we how we feel and how mm-hmm. we are later on in life I know when we I, I was speaking to some old school friends the other day and it's funny how they still remember you and think that you're still that person from school but yeah you've experienced and done so many different things it's like I'm not I am the same person but you know you've grown and you've developed and you might be totally different to how they remember you yeah and you're not obliged to your past yeah. at all you know and um Again, it's having that allowance, you know, for where you are and your growth and who you've become and just being curious about that, you know, where and those people that knew you in the past, yeah, they are knowing a different aspect of you. But again, 
that's just what they know they don't either they will choose to get to know the new you or they won't they they will leave but again that's not your problem that's not your responsibility you just have to we can only work out what's going on within us you know and and just open up to the potentiality of what we can be you know but I said we're not obliged to anybody else (laughs) at all including our past self absolutely um now you've also written a book tell us a little bit about the book that you've written yeah so um well I'm currently just finished the third book (laughs) (laughs) I am (laughs) so yeah so the first book um which is out now is about Lupa, the she wolf of Rome, mother of destiny. So she is that guys that I um, I met when I was going through um, a part of my life where I'd been made redundant from what I thought was my dream job, and I didn't know what to do. I was like, who am I? Where am I? And she came to me um, and helped me kind of really step into my destiny. Now, as I explained a little bit before about her mythology, so she's connecting to ancient Roman mythology, which is one of the um, the histories that I like to share and I like to explore with my students. Um, and that's all about kind of her story. So I retell her story from the perspective, you know, her voice, because very much in the ancient tales, majority written by men, it's a very male perspective. Um, it's a very Roman perspective. So I give her a voice and I give the kind of tools and tips to connect with her to embody kind of the mother wolf or to call her in as a guide, as a guardian. Um, And then the second book, uh, which is out in August, um, called Wolf, is an inspirational guide in how to embody your inner wolf. Um, Mm. I've got both here, actually. I don't know. (laughs) Um, But yes, that's kind of, um, I explore kind of real wolves and how they can be an inspiration example, you know, the kind of um, the pack and how we can embody kind of the archetypes that they offer, the lessons that they have, um, you know, like how to connect to our own unique howl, how to be oh, wow. a diverse and different self. Yeah, there's always howling involved with me. Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> always comes out and the dogs start joining in in my village as well. <laughs> uh, brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a, you know, that book is really about how to access your courage and your trust and your authenticity by exploring how you can be wolf you know in your life and you'll find lots of different ways to explore you know kind of what morph might mean for you and what um you know what you can do you know in your life to access courage and trust and authenticity and then um my third and fourth books are going a bit more into the roman mythology so it's exploring um more gods and goddesses you know in the the roman pantheon um so ancient rome so like you know jupiter and juno and mars and diana um which you know some people might or might not know, but, you know, these are ancient kind of energies, you know, divine feminine and divine masculine energies that, again, you can call in and learn about their stories. So mm-hmm. listening to their stories, listening to the way other people have lived and worked and practiced and worshipped in the past and see if it resonates and perhaps follow that pathway mm-hmm. or just, you know, calling in these people as guides and guardians, you know, as guardian angels, if that's what resonates, you know, for you. So, um yeah they're my my books I like my children I take them everywhere it's funny Aww. I went somewhere the other day and um someone was like oh yeah I heard about your book and I like pulled it out of my handbag like why have you got your one? book and I was like it's my child <laughs> <laughs> I take it everywhere <laughs> oh well why not you're proud of that you do. did it take you long to write the books um the first one I did actually it was it was completely done in three to four months it was I did it intensively so I kind of I was at the lie being like six to eight hours six days a week you know I really did full in but the second book took me a year because um I wanted a bit more spaciousness with it and I was you know doing a lot more workshops and kind of you know um one-to-one clients and things like that so yeah it depends like in this one I've just written there was I've never done so much research in my life even my master's like was simple compared to <laughs> the amount of going through ancient texts you know of like men like 3,000 years ago and trying to understand what they're talking about I mean it's hard enough trying to understand men now but yeah. 3,000 year old men is just like oh gosh <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> you mentioned there um with some of the books that call upon um that goddess or who you need to work with what do you mean by that somebody might be listening to the podcast and thinking when you say you call upon this person or work with this certain goddess Mm -hmm. how how do you do that so I think it depends on how you kind of um how goddess lands with you and resonates with you so I know some people kind of believe that 
like I don't believe that God has a single parent. I do believe that there is the masculine and the feminine. So there's God and goddess, mother gods, you know, and um, father goddess. You know, it's kind of that I believe that the creator holds the masculine and the feminine and therefore can manifest as both. So I connect to goddess mythology as, you know, connecting to the divine. Some people might kind of resonate with goddess being just archetypes. So they are actually goddesses within us. Mm-hmm. And it's the different archetypes that we can access, like, you know, mother, maiden, crone, lover. So it's aspects of self that you can embody if and when you need to. Mm-hmm. Some people see kind of goddesses almost like, you know, um, avatars, you know, they're kind of um, like guardian angels. So they're working on behalf of the divine. Mm-hmm. And then some people see them as just stories, you know, people of the past that were finding meaning and um connection and understanding of life and the world so whichever way divine you know feminine resonates for you is going to change how you connect to it so it's totally okay to just read the stories and think wow this is really inspirational like I I understand this has helped me to understand myself so you can go away read the stories and just enjoy them as like you know as kind of deepening your understanding of self you can Mm -hmm. um take you know if you feel that you you really resonate with goddess as an aspect of the divine you would therefore kind of perhaps go deeper maybe into worship and making it a religious practice to connect with the goddess so you know maybe bringing her into your daily life through prayers or affirmation or you know if you're a dance practice or you're walking or an altar or you know actually um connecting to it as a higher being mm-hmm. um and again, you know, you can you can ask them, call them in as allies, as in, you know, if you say there's someone in particular. So you say like um, Diana, goddess Diana in the Roman pantheon. She's very much um, her archetype. Her lessons are all about the maiden and about freedom and accessing kind of the freedom of self and, you know, shooting mm. your arrow and direction and knowing what you want and and shooting in the right direction and finding that, following that. So if that resonated for you and that's what you needed at the time you needed to access that part of yourself you could ask her like you know I just you know I think like you know I I was brought up a Christian and everything was very formalized you know and the priest could only kind of say the prayers but I the way I connect to kind of goddess is like you know like say it's Diana I'd be like hey Diana you know I really need to feel this today can you be with me can you support me so it mm-hmm. would be like a guardian angel or you're just talking to your spiritual mate you know that's going to come and help you and just be with you and you can just feel that as a presence I like your best buddy you know they're kind of celebrating and supporting you mm-hmm. then in meditation they might give you signs they might give you clues they might kind of give you insight um and you know any of those ways is completely fine it's good it's whatever's right for you you know it's a pathway I believe there are different pathways to the same thing essentially yeah. <laughs> and um about energies is there certain times and periods that are more powerful than others to work with certain goddesses I mean or even the wolf energy you mentioned what about like the full moon or the new moon is that something that you work with with the wolf energy yeah, I mean, wolves don't, they're not, they're not what I would call specifically a kind of a moon um, totem or ally. Um, it's one of these misconceptions about the kind of the howling wolf to the moon. Yeah. I don't even know where that's come from. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have no idea. I mean, it's a beautiful image, though, isn't it? I think yeah. it's because when the, the wolf howls, it lifts its head, it opens up its throat chakra and it projects its voice up to the sky to be able to you know so those howls can be heard like five ten miles away by their pack yeah so I suppose because they're looking up it it, beautiful imagery to look at the moon isn't it you know to connect to that so um I believe I mean mean, the archetype the archetypes of wolf will fit into the archetypes that kind of go with the the moon seasons and the moon cycles but if it was the moon in particular that you wanted to connect to, I believe there are um, guides that are more kind of specific to the moon. Um, so for mm-hmm. the ancient Romans, it was Luna, um, goddess Luna. She is the moon goddess. She is she was literally the moon, you know, personified. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, if you wanted to connect to the time of the crescent moon, it would be Diana, the maiden. You know, the full moon is the mother of pregnancy. So she was often seen as goddess Juno, so the, the mother goddess, the wife of Jupiter, the queen, that aspect. 
Um, so, you know, certain goddess are going to connect to the moon and that can, you know, you can do that. You can explore that, you know, and um, also fit that in with your menstrual cycle as well. If you're a female that um, wants to do that, then, you know, yeah, they I mean, they all have their own like speciality. It's like the flower essences. Yeah. You know, they all have like their it was like us as well we all have our, a unique gift that we can contribute well mm -hmm. the goddesses and the flowers are all like that they have something that it's like their speciality their skill don't they put on their cv that you know makes yeah. them particularly like you know they're really good at that so mm -hmm. you'd want to go to them for that so sometimes when you're searching for a goddess you can even just type in google google or you could ask me you can email me um you know and just put like oh i'm looking for someone to help me with you know blah 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 you know we're maybe getting a new job <laughs> mm. you know um the example before so there would be an ally that would particularly you know support you with that you know so I just find out what it is that you need really I mean and truly be really honest with yourself you know you may mm. think you want a new job but is you actually want a new job or is it that you want to feel more comfortable in your job or you want to be recognized you want to have acknowledgement or you want to have more freedom Align with what the feeling is first, and then you would then call for the help that is then matches what it is you mm -hmm. actually truthfully, honestly need. Yeah, it's like be careful what you wish for, isn't it? I know that me and my husband <laughs> were saying, Oh, it'd be lovely if we had a younger couple that moved into our, our little area because everyone's a little bit more mature, should we say, in our little cul de sac. And a, a young couple have moved in, and what well, we've never done so much socializing, we're like, Oh my god, we can't keep up with all of this. We're like, but yeah, we wanted a young couple to move in, yeah, I know, but we're not used to socializing this much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's getting really specific you know like you know if you are wanting to manifest something just as I said it's being really honest but you know again what the feelings that you want so like a lot of people go like say you're wanting to manifest a man you know a partner they'd go oh, I want someone you know that's really fit well then you might end up with someone that likes to go on two hour jogs every morning and he wants you to go with him like yeah. that sounds like a horror movie to me <laughs> <laughs> you know like you know it's, it's like you know getting really really specific and it's okay like I think as women though we're told you know we can't be fussy we just have to accept what we're given mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and um we kind of just put up with what well, you should never put up with you know no. you you it's more than valid for you to ask for what exactly you want you know mm -hmm. um but you have to get honest with yourself first and mm -hmm. then ask and the asking is the action <laughs> again why do you feel that you tend to um, have more women come to you? Is it something that you sort of put out there that you prefer to have more women joining your courses or is it just yeah. happening like that? I think um, when it comes to the wolf energy, there's a lot of men that do resonate with that and they come for those courses. But I do feel in my life, I think um, I think the dancing is what draws women in because it's I mean I mean the thing is like the main dances that I teach are um belly dance and our Hawaiian hula um for technique wise and then there's dance meditation and dance healing and I think uh -huh. that that really resonates for women and I th yeah. think probably one of the problems is that in the west men don't feel that they can dance or enjoy dance it's yeah. very like you know you're talking before about male pride they're kind of they don't have so, that validation okay. that they can actually enjoy dance. I mean, I'm sure there are probably hundreds of men that want to be top pro ballet dancers, but people would just laugh at them. Yeah. Again, they're not having that understanding and that allowance to be exactly who they are either. So I think, I think it's been women because, you know, they're the ones that have had, it's been easier to access my work, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, because... I mean, I have had men that have come to belly dancing, you know, and they have enjoyed it, but they feel uncomfortable because it's a room full of women and they feel like they don't fit. And I, that's a real shame because, you know, look at Middle East and Africa, you know, where these dancers are coming from. Men, dude, everybody dances, you know, it's not a gender yeah. exclusive thing. It's because it's a way to express the joy of life or to, you know, kind of express how you're feeling. It's just um, moving the body is so natural, you know. Yeah, and it's um, a great way to get rid of tension. <laughs> yeah yeah and it's but it's it's one of those things that it just we don't and I, th I I do think I think sometimes that we're very lucky as women in that we do have women's circles you know if you go to say a yoga studio 90 percent of that program is for women yeah and I, I do worry about the fact that there isn't anything for men you know they because we have had a rising of the feminine 
mm-hmm. um, and the kind of I feel like the men have been left behind, and they're now having to process. Okay, how do we navigate in this new world where women are empowered? Yeah, they also need support in kind of um, working out what to do now and who they are as well, because they've also not had the understanding you know they've been told you they've got to do this they've got to be like the money provider they've got Mm -hmm. to be the strong one that just goes out and works and doesn't have a life doesn't have hobbies so I think they, you know they also need kind of this facilitation as well and it it makes me a bit sad really I I need belly dance classes just for men (laughs) yeah no you're right I never really looked at or thought about that you know because it can I suppose really disempower some men with with nowadays with like you said the women having their voice and being more empowered and being more successful in some ways and you know being more some business-like and yeah standing up for themselves but then like you said there might be the, the, those guys that you know don't know how to handle that or don't know what where they where they, their position lies or what their role is yeah because they've been brought up and they have been told that they are the ones in charge yeah. You know, it's not like they've chosen it. They have also been conditioned into that. And so now there's women, you know, we're coming forward. We're reclaiming our voices as well. And and I, and I think, I mean, there are people out there that are supporting men and guiding them. But it, we need to work this this through together. That, like yeah. I said, the I believe that the divine is made of both the God and the goddess. You know, the divine isn't a single parent. There's the mother and the father. So both work together you know like yin and yang there's two halves there there always is and I know Mm -hmm. that you know we have so many genders now you know 50 shades of gray you know it's not just black and white but there's always a proportion of one and the other whether that be 90% feminine 10% masculine or the opposite you know Mm that there's always both and um they need that balance there's always the two and I think that we both genders need to work on also kind of integrating the opposite gender within themselves so as women we need to look at integrating our masculine and the masculine needs to work at integrating their feminine as well you know yeah. because as like I said they're seeing the feminine rising and it's also that's going to trigger the feminine within them mm. and they need to work out I can see this reflection of myself in the outside world so how now how do I integrate you know the this new type of feminine within myself mm. What's the biggest thing that you've learned over the years of sort of self-discovery or, you know, being involved with what you do? I think for me, like my kind of my buzzword for my life is courage. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I mean about taking action is, is, is just just doing it like, um, you know, growing up, I had a very authoritative kind of overbearing father and um, I kind of I remember writing a poem when I was a teenager um in that I imagined myself as like a tiny little acorn and I couldn't grow because my father was such a big oak and I'd fallen like below his leaves and there was no sunlight and for me it was a hugely courageous thing to to choose to go and heal the masculine within myself and therefore have allowance and understanding and compassion for the masculine outside and I and I every lesson and kind of um everything that's come up in my life, my experiences have all been teaching me about courage. And I feel like um, courage is, is that action. It's just doing something, even when it's scary, you know, even when you're not feeling confident, just doing it, you know, you just have to do it. You have to take that step. Like I said, mm. no one else is going to do it for you. You have to be responsible. Um, and just moving through that, you know, um, I think often we think that, you know, we can be courageous once we're not scared of something, but I think actually courage is doing something even when we're scared of it, you know, like even if it's comes to self-care, self-love is just doing it even when it scares the shit out of you, you know, like you, just, you know, <laughs> just doing it even when it's hard, you know, even when it's difficult. Yeah. Just take even small steps, small actions, you know, it doesn't have to be big, um, but just, you know, you are, it's reminding yourself that you're worthy of being courageous, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why I have to keep reminding myself that, um you know courage is kind of like my way of of loving myself it's saying like well you're good enough you know to go and do that you're good enough to go and ask for that you know it's I'm doing it on behalf of myself you know it's a it's an uh, courage is an act of devotion I think Mm. that's my biggest lesson (laughs) oh that's amazing and and you know is I mean some 
people have it obviously tougher than others. We all have our own experiences, our own things that we all go through. But, and I'm mm. very much aware, obviously, being a mum myself, like your parenting and ha- the impact it has on your children and things that you think, oh, that won't affect them. You know, it really can. And, and like you were saying, I mean, sometimes it might take, you know, whether you just do it yourself and you're able to take that that leap of faith and 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 that self discovery, or for a lot of people, I suppose it can they don't find that release until that person's passed passed away, you know, and then mm-hmm. they then they feel oh I'm free I haven't you know I haven't got that hanging over me anymore. But some of the times I'm saying like people have got that sort of figure or someone around them still and not able they feel they can't break free from that it must be very difficult. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. And um, I think, again, it just comes down to uh, our choices, you know, like, um, you know, like in this example, you know, is that Nelson Mandela, you know, he was put in prison for an exceptionally long time. And yet that was the place where he found freedom was inside mm-hmm. that prison cell. Um, and, you know, so he constant well, that situation that he had, you know, he made the best of that. He courageously chose himself, his own peace, um, his own working through his own stuff, even in that terrible yeah. situation. And I think, it, again, it, it comes down to choice. And there are some really horrible things that happen in this world, you know, and it, and it isn't easy. It's not easy being a human for anybody. Um, mm. Again, you know, having that allowance, it, it, it can be it can be really, really shitty sometimes. Sorry, I keep using the word. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it can be, you know, and um, it is hard, you know, it is hard. Mm. But again, that courage is is that fire, you know, that that, that sends us forward. So I imagine you kind of, you know, when you're sitting in the darkness, you can You can just sit there in the darkness and remain in the darkness. You could try clawing at the walls to get yourself out of that room. You know, you could cry and lament and feel sorry for yourself, you know, or you could choose to light a candle in that dark room Mm -hmm. and bring yourself warmth and light. And it doesn't change the fact that you're in that dark room. Perhaps it's not the time to leave that dark room. Mm -hmm. Maybe there wasn't even a dark room in the first place. It's something, you know, that you know not you imagined but it's something that you know was a story or you could be you know like I said it might you might need something else to get yourself out of that dark room but the fact that you chose to light a candle in that room that is what is important that you chose to bring light and warmth into that situation and mm. that's something that you can do you can do any time yeah those small steps that you were saying about those little yeah. things every day well I mean what's next for you what are going to be your next projects in the future (laughs) have you got anything lined up yeah so I'm I'm about to start my next book um so I've got um I said wolf coming out in August I've just finished the Roman mythology book and I'm working on um a new book um that is going to be um um, it's around that kind of the goddess of flowers. So it's all about um, connecting to flowers as as a part of the divine, mm-hmm. using them as a te- um, healing tool. I also um, teach for the College of Psychic Studies. So oh, nice. I've got a, a big workshops coming up with them in July as well. Yep. So that's the most next thing. I'm, I hope we have a holiday at some point. That would be <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh-huh. but it sounds like you, you deserve one. <laughs> <laughs> well it's been so lovely to get to know you today and to hear all about the amazing work that you do and how people can get involved and the small steps that they can take to find that courage that empowerment and to discover themselves so they feel they've lost themselves a little bit along the way and really appreciate your time so Rachel thank you very much indeed good luck with the future and your plans and your book and hopefully oh, we'll hear more about so you much. soon yeah thank you thank you so much for having me here and for having this beautiful podcast <laughs> Take care, Rachel. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ask the Answers podcast. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, and save to your library. Remember, there are hundreds of psychic readers available on our website for readings 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To triple your credits on your first purchase, visit asktheanswer.com and click on the new customer offer banner.